I am reading Do You Know Me by Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcott. Chapter 5. It's Sunday, Tally's worst day of the week. Everybody else that she knows hates Monday the most, but Tally thinks that Sunday is definitely the hardest day. She's given it a lot of thought and decided that the reason she dislikes Sunday so much is because it's a fake. It pretends to be all fantastic and weekendy, but the fact is that on Sunday, you can't ever forget that the week is looming ahead and the anticipation of having to go to school is lurking in every second. At least Monday is honest. It knows it's rubbish and it doesn't pretend to be anything else. This particular Sunday is trickier than most and it isn't about to get any better. What Tally really needs is a chill out and a rest after the last few days, but Dad has ruined any chance of that, which seems completely unfair when the end of last week was so difficult. When Tally got home from school on Thursday, after the drama lesson with Lucy and then the maths lesson with Mr Simpson, Mum made the mistake of asking if she had any homework to do. Tally did have homework and she had intended on doing it after she'd had a snack and played with Rupert. But Mum spoiled her plan by asking her about it. And by the time she stopped feeling upset, she was too tired to do anything except to go to bed. It was a shame that two of the coffee mugs got broken, but Mum shouldn't have made that sighing noise when Tally told her that she was ruining her life. That wasn't helpful. She didn't mean to break the mugs. That's the hardest thing about meltdowns. When you can't control your brain or body, then things can happen that you didn't plan on doing or saying. And now all she wants to do is keep making her video, but Dad won't leave her alone. What do you think about this top? He asks, holding up a blue and white stripy sweatshirt. It could be good for the evenings when it gets a bit cooler and you've always loved wearing it. Whatever. Tally looks back at her screen. She knows that if Dad stops distracting her, then she can make her best TikTok ever. And that is far more important to her right now than a sweatshirt. He's wrong anyway. She totally hates that top now. It gives her a headache whenever she looks at it. And if Dad packs it in her bag, then she's never, ever going to wear it, no matter how cold it might be. Mum would know that, but Mum isn't here. She's out with Nell, and so Tally has to put up with Dad and his uneducated opinion of her favourite clothes. We need to pack your swimming things, he continues. Can you go and choose a towel from the airing cupboard, please? Tally ignores him and swivels round on her bed so that her back is towards him. Maybe he'll get the message and go away. Tally! Dad's voice is gentle, but Tally can hear that he's serious. We agreed that we'd pack your bag today, remember? You promised us that you'd help if Mum took you shopping yesterday. She presses record and starts to make her video. And then Dad stands up and Tally sees him on her phone screen looking over her shoulder. You ruined my TikTok! Her words fire out of her mouth like bullets zooming around the room until they find Dad. Now I'm going to have to start all over again, which means that I haven't got time to pack my stupid bag. So you'll have to do it yourself. She throws her phone on the bed and scowls. If she's honest, she'd rather watch Peppa Pig than go on TikTok. But the fear of being caught watching a baby programme means she can't let herself relax in the way that she wants to. Dad always tells her that nobody would ever know. But Dad doesn't understand. The kids at school have a way of finding that kind of stuff out. She didn't think anyone would ever know about her tiger mask. And look what happened there. Actually, don't bother packing anything, she tells him now. I'm not going on the school trip anyway. Dad gets up off from the floor and walks to, across to the bed where Tally is sitting. We've been through this, sweetheart, he says, perching on the mattress beside her. You're going to love it when you get there. Tally throws herself back on her duvet and stares up at the ceiling. How dare you tell me that I'm going to love it? Her voice is low and filled with fury. You aren't me, are you? I might have a terrible time. I might fall in the lake and drown. I might tumble off a cliff and die. I might get kidnapped and you'll never see me again. She twists her head to look at Dad. Do you even know me? Do you have any idea about how scary it is being me? Have you actually given any thought at all to my safety? Dad nods solemnly. I have, so has Mum. 
We spent a long time thinking about whether it's safe for you to go and we've come up to one very important conclusion. And what's that? Tally closes her eyes, trying to block out the scary images that are flickering across her brain like a film reel. We've decided that it's far more dangerous for you not to go on this trip, Dad says. We could keep you at home and never let you go anywhere, but that wouldn't be right, Tally. The best way for you to be safe, for you to have new experiences and figure out new ways of dealing with things, is to go on a trip. Tally opens her eyes and stares at Dad. That's silly. Staying at home isn't dangerous. If I stay here, then I'll be perfectly safe. Dad nods. For now. But one day, you're going to be out in the big, wide world. You're making it sound like the story of the three little pigs, snorts Tally, sitting up and swinging her legs over the side of the bed. Are you going to throw me out of the house and send me off to make my living? Dad laughs. Not quite, but we won't always be there to help you. And I'd like to think that any daughter of mine would know how to build a house out of bricks, not straw. I bet Nell would totally choose straw, says Tally, choosing to ignore the very daft comment about mum and dad not always being there to help her because they're her parents. Of course they'll always be there. Dad stands up and walks across to where Tally's bag is lying on the floor. I don't think that's true. Nell went on the go camp trip when she was in year seven and she came back with a ton of useful skills. Plus, she had a great time. Tally frowns. Just because Nell had a good time does not mean that it's going to be the same for her. Don't forget that Mrs Jarman is going to be there with you, says Dad, staring at the massive pile of clothes in front of him. She said that you can go to her any time if you feel worried or you have a problem. Mum says that she's very nice. She is, agrees Tally, tapping her hands on her knees. Mrs Jarman was the person who told her that she shouldn't waste any more time trying to be like other people and that it's okay just to be her. She sees Tally and she knows who she really is. Having just one teacher at school who understands her has made Year 7 much more bearable and even though most lessons are still really tough, being able to be truly herself in drama class sometimes feels like the only thing keeping her going when everything else is so hard. So... My thinking is, you should go on the trip and see how you feel, Dad continues, because otherwise you're letting your worries decide what you do. You are fierce and wonderful and determined and you are capable of doing anything, even the things that might frighten you. You just need to be in charge of the choosing. Tally thinks about this for a moment. Lots of things frighten her and she isn't sure if Dad is right when he says that she can do anything, because has he even seen her trying to skip with a rope? But she doesn't want to let her worries choose what she does or doesn't get to do. He's definitely right about that. Her worries get in the way too much as it is. Maybe she can squash them down like one of her squishy toys and make her own mind up for once. Fine. I'll give it a go. But what about Rupert? It's the same question that he has asked, she has asked approximately 100 times since the topic of the trip was first raised. Who is going to look after him? Dad sighs. It's a very small sigh, but Tally hears it all the same. I'm going to walk him every day, he tells her, also for the hundredth time, and Mum is going to make sure that he's eaten his food. Tally shakes her head. That's not what I mean, she says. I mean, who is going to look after him? Who is going to check that he isn't feeling stressed while I'm away? Who is going to talk to him and tell him about what's happening each day? You know, the important stuff. Dad smiles. I absolutely promise that we will all make sure Rupert isn't pining away without you. Me, Mum and Nell, we'll all take care of him. Which socks do you want to take? Dogs can have terrible separation anxiety, Tally tells him, sitting down on the floor and picking up a pair of socks. They're the special ones without a oh they're the special ones without a seam, so she puts them into her bag and then starts sifting through a pile of t-shirts, looking for any that are purple, her favourite colour. You need to be alert, okay? He might start whining or stop eating and sleeping. You might need to let him sleep without with something that reminds him of me. Dad nods. Understood. Um, do you want to take the blue pyjamas or the purple ones? Tally points to the purple pyjamas and finds another pair of socks to put in the bag. You could always let him sleep in my room if he gets really sad. 
I'll keep that suggestion in mind, Dad tells her, but I think Rupert is going to be fine. And just think how happy he's going to be when he sees you get home, when, he, when you get home. Tally thinks that probably Rupert would be even happier if she didn't go away in the first place. But she can tell that Dad has had enough of talking and just wants to get her bag packed. So she decides to be kind and keep her opinion to herself.